legendary Jaguar racing cars, the current top sports version, the F-Type SVR, and the future of Jaguar racing with the Formula E car. That is all today on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. A special feature coverage today from the Old Timer Grand Prix at the Nürburgring in Germany and we'll focus on the Jaguar sports cars past, present and future. So we'll have a look at, for example, the old D-Type legendary Le Mans car, the XJ13. Then we'll have a full review of the current F-Type SVR, the new top sports version, and also looking to the future with the new Formula E car, the electric Formula One, as you take it. And we'll also have a lot of interesting interviews. Let's go now with Auto Fuel in full HD, full screen and full length. We are starting with Jaguar Racing Heritage, as in 1951 the brand won the 24 hours of Le Mans for the very first time with, you can see it right here, the XK120C. C stood for competition, and that was also the basis then to develop the Jaguar C type, which won Le Mans again in 1953. However, still to come was the Jaguar D-Type, the successor then of the C-Type. And with that one here, with the D-Type, Jaguar won Le Mans 1955, 1956 and 1957, three times in a row. This very D-Type here is just one of 12 builds, so-called long nose D-Type. This one here is from 1956, absolutely priceless. Mike Hawthorne drove this car here, for example. And you know, the very characteristic form is, of course, here the rear. That was built for aerodynamics. You can see how the airflow was directed to the rear. And, of course, really spectacular at the time. And it's one of the reasons why Jaguar racing cars got this enormous heritage because of this very iconic car. And it's really incredible, but in the Jaguar Classics Challenge, People drive with those cars here, C-Types, D-Types, also pre-1966 E-Types or Mark I, Mark II, or also XK120, XK140. Private owners drive with those cars in the racing challenge. And well, I think, well, it's really dangerous to damage those very precious cars. But, you know, if you're able to do it and want to do it, sure, you can do it in this um, classic challenge. Cost about 700 pounds um, entry for each race, and they have, for example, already raced in Donington Park or also in Le Mans. And today they also race at the Nürburgring.
And this is also a very extraordinary piece of racing history. This is the Jaguar XJ13 from 1966. So we're having kind of the, the 50 years party here for this car. And this was already designed for Le Mans, so as a successor to the D-Type then. But you know, company was in a crisis at that time and Ford decided to say, oh, we go with Ford GT to Le Mans and we leave the Jaguar product. And so this car never really competed in Le Mans. Still, it had a lot of power, a five liter V12 with 500 horsepower and it went about 260 kilometers an hour. So very impressive piece and this is really unique. This car is only existing this one very time we see here today. Although it massively crashed once, but then it was rebuilt to have this exact status here. And now I have the pleasure to be joined by Norman Dewars. He has been for a long time the chief testing guy at Jaguar and has been testing all of the racing cars. And you also have a special connection to the X XJ13 because you're probably, I think, the only guy in the world who crashed the car. Oh. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So what, what happened there? Uh, well, I, uh, we were doing a film which they wanted to produce, showing the 13, because that was the first car to have the V12 engine. And now we were going to launch the Series 3E with the V12. So they said, uh, what we need, Norman, for the film, can you go around the circuit, the big circuit, as quick as possible, we're going to have a camera on the top of the bank in, filming. I said, OK. They wanted four laps, so I'd done three laps. On my fourth lap, I came uh, off the one bank in, down what we call the railway straight. I'll get up to about 175, 78. Then change gear, lift off to go on the bottom bank in. Uh, usually about 145 when I go on the bank in. So I shot on the bank in, halfway round, uh, the... Uh, the car lurched, I hit the safety fence and uh, careered down the banking into the infield. The car then nose and tail and then side rolled. I don't know how many times. Because what happened, as, it, as soon as I knew I'd lost it, the car was at this angle. It was because uh, a tyre got loose. Right? No, no, the, the magnesium alloy wheel. Collapsed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Collapsed. And uh, it immediately like burst the tire. That was it. So uh, always when you're in that situation, there's nothing you can do about it. You switch off. And we didn't have seat belts, so I then get down in the cockpit and let it do its roll. When it stopped, I looked out of the cockpit and I could see the sky, so I knew I was up the right way. Climbed out the car and uh, that was it, you know. But I say, uh, I walked then from where it had crashed in the infield, walked back onto the circuit. Two cars were coming down, that was one with the film crew, uh, then the, the one Jaguar with my mechanics. They slowly came down, very slowly, uh, got out the cars and they said, uh, Norman, where's the car? I said, in the bloody field. There it was in the field. They said, wow, what, what's happened? I said, where have you been? I said, I could have been killed underneath it. They said, well, we heard the engine stop, but we thought you'd run out of petrol. <laughs> so, I said, that's stupid. <laughs> but that, that was the way the crash was, that was it. I, the maximum speed I had out of it was 206. Miles. Uh, miles per hour, yeah. yeah. But uh, as I say, a one-off car, never raced, but it's got a lot of history. This is how a very old Jaguar car could look like when you haven't restored its original status yet. This is here an XK120, also a very legendary car. Here in the OTS version stands for open two-seater, which is obviously is. This car was built between 1948 and 1954. This one here is kind of off the middle from 1950. And um, as you can see, this is what happens to a car over the years, especially 
you know, there are sometimes those um, special findings where in, maybe in an old barn in France or so, some of those cars are discovered. But then there's of course also a special service and Jago has also improved, for example, the service for the old parts that you can also get parts for your vintage cars now. And then you can also bring that back to life again. Of course, again, with a lot of investment. Ta-da, magic! And that's how a really restored car looks like. It's also the XK120, just as a fixed head coupe version, so not the open two-seater and really a beautiful form safe used here. Some kind of design scheme that are still carried over today. And the XK120 was also among the fastest road cars in the 50s with this 3.4 liter six cylinder engine, about 160 horsepower. It got up to a speed of 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour. And that was really groundbreaking at that time. And let's now take a look at the current Jaguar Sports Pinnacle with 575 horsepower. And also the fastest serial Jaguar. First time since the XJ220. This is a Jaguar reaching over 300 kilometers an hour or over 200 miles an hour. We're going to take a look here at the Jaguar F-Type SVI in exterior, interior, also some special things there. And of course the driving performance and the sound. Let's go first with the front. First of all, this color. Seriously, it's really suitable for me, don't you think so? This is a color that we here in Automobile could also call Thomas Blue. In this case, Jaguar named it Ultra Blue and I think so beautiful, a special combination to this very car. That one is definitely already my favorite as for the exterior color. You pay double the price than the base model for the SVR, so about $125,000 in the US or $140,000 euros in Germany for the coupe. There's also the convertible available, it's even more expensive. But what do you get as a difference? First of all, the car sits a little bit lower, bigger air intakes right here, a little bit similar to the F-Type R, red Jaguar crawler here in the front with a, with a background. Also here this special structure in the front grille, so really massive appearance already in the front. Have you remembered those air outtakes with the vintage cars? So this tradition has been kept on with the very powerful Jaguar sports cars. Those special air outtakes with super, supercharged engines at the pinnacle sports cars from Jaguar. Also an aggressive design part. 4 meters 47 or 14 foot 6 is the total length of this sports vehicle. Still a really compact car and it also brings up of course something for the handling. Special with the F SVR is that we got the black Jaguar logo right here with another air styling element. 20 inch rims, really huge in the two color scheme, yellow brake calipers from those carbon ceramic brakes that come with the SVR. They're really massive and give you a lot of performance. They also keep the rim, rims rather tidy. They don't create this same amount of brake dust. However, if you don't use this car on a racetrack or don't hammer the brakes from time to time, they might start squeaking. And how to release that one? Well, hammer the brakes. Then you release this squeaking layer from time to time. What else is special? In general, the F-Type is my favorite car as for the exterior design with those strong shoulders and the Coupe style ending, even though I would always go for convertible to drive the car. If I just look at the exterior, the Coupe is more beautiful to me. And then really the big difference is the rear wing. I will also soon show you when we move towards the interior that you can adjust that one so it's not a totally static rear wing. 
and you can see it here now already in the side profile sometimes huge fixed rings look really weird and I have to admit I also prefer when it's not there but here I think they have rather seamlessly integrated this fixed wing so it still looks beautiful from the side profile. SVR logo for special vehicle operations on the rear part and then a massive lower diffuser with those four exhaust pipes and they are really not fake they are in this very size. Wow what a massive appearance this is really the biggest difference from with the SVR version the F-Type R already looks huge but this is of course something more and then you can also see the rear wing from this perspective a little bit hiding the Jaguar Leaper on the rear part that's a little bit a pity. In a classic E-Type manner we can open the engine in this kind of way and this is the massive V8 engine 5 liter displacement 575 horsepower they have saved about 20 kilograms of weight with the ceramic brakes and even more horsepower they added than here for the engine and that gives you together with some tuning 0.4 seconds faster than the R model so this one then here it's really even faster than the F-Type R and then I mean that's really something and well what I'm wondering is that we don't have a cover here for the for the engine to really see the, the metal part of the car and talking about the figures 3.7 seconds is the acceleration 0 to 100 or 0 to 60 miles an hour it would be 4.1 with the F-Type R so if you even want to step up the game further then this is here your choice and um, total vehicle weight by the way is about 1700 kilograms but you get an equal distribution from front to rear as for the weight and all we drive from this engine will be about one third to the front two third to the rear and you might wonder i mean why does it say airbag there that's exactly for the front hood and this has to do with passion passenger safety that you know i mean not in the way that it's lifted right up but it's just lifted a slight way up to protect um, some pedestrians falling to the to the hood and um, you know that dampens the impact a little bit so also with a big sports car big horsepower you can think about pedestrian safety This is the standard Jaguar key fob and what's not standard but special with Jaguar look at the mirrors and also at the handles here a Jaguar welcomes you when you get in the car well this is common with other cars but that's not and then you can open it and in general the F-Type of course has a very sporty interior here especially with the SVR we got First of all, contrast stitches, which are here matching the ultimate blue exterior color also on the inside. That's really beautiful and would definitely be my favorite color pick. And then, you know, we have this quilting on the inside of the doors right here and also on the seats. This special quilted stamps that you see on the seats. They have a little bit of a vintage style and it looks really nice. And this, the funny thing is that also when you sit on it, it, you have to get used to it, but overall it, you know, it um, loosens up the seating position a little bit. The special sport seats here with more shoulder support and a stamped SVR logo right here. Unfortunately, you can only get them with animal skin. That would be an argument for me to go for a basis F-Type because in a basis F-Type, you can also get the microfiber seats on the inside. Other than that, here, for example, the entry it's also marked with an SVR badge and steering wheel, blue contour stitches on the inside and we will also soon show you another detailed look all of the dashboard and also top of the instrument. That one is covered with microfiber here with the F-Type SVR. This is really my favorite part so it would be great if they could also use it on the seats. 
And by the way, for a comfortable entry, you can also hold the open button on the key and then the windows go down. Because, you know, when you, for example, when you are in a very narrow parking lot, then you can open the door like this and also, you know, bend over the window like this here. And so it doesn't have to be that wide and you can still get in the car easier then. So that's an advantage. In general, the car sits very low, of course, um, lower than the normal version from suspension. But as I mentioned earlier, the seats are relatively comfortable for a small sports car. They have a lot of space also for big passengers. Um, headspace wise, well, it works that we have, especially with a panoramic roof. Um, like, like this, I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. It's still okay. Also very, very soft cover of the ceiling. Beautifully done and a lot of emotional details here. Steering wheel can be electronically adjusted up and down and also if you want to have it a little bit more inside. Seat adjustment is on the inside of the doors. Lumbar support here for example and especially funny the side bolts does and when you release them you hear the air pressure. You know like this always <laughs> funny. Cockpit overview defined by the split between driver and co-driver on the inside. Again, all around Alcantara also here to protect your knees. Very beautifully done. Then inspired by aircraft, all the vents we have here, also the stick for the automatic gear. And then you got this Eurofighter inspired shifting knob which you know goes into dry drive mode for the racing drive or for a snow drive soon more deals about that and the overall scheme is really here the microfiber as you see it all the way around the cockpit here and that's of course my special thing especially when it's combined with the blue contour stitches so really a dream setup for the dashboard and for for the color choices no question the steering wheel here also features new material on the shifting columns because that was really cheaply done for the surface before now it feels definitely better and also with you know the plus and minus stamped in here right there another svr logo at the steering wheel this can also be heated by the way heated steering wheel function the instruments are really focused on the driver and really hidden deep in there with the digital screen in the middle and you also got well, the latest infotainment system uh, it's not that huge as in the very new Jaguar um, and the Land Rover models. But you got the basic system with whom go into details about that one. Another nice detail with the SVR logo here. And also there's a special surface here. And um, you also hear it. It's got a structure and you know a very fine vertical structure. Same around here and so they've thought about a lot here. Overall definitely also with this aircraft inspired levers for the AC and stuff. Really a good aircraft inspired cockpit with a lot of emotional elements. Build quality wise at a good level. Um, however, I think there's still some, um, some air above that left. But build quality here in the F-Type is also better than for example in the XA, XE or in the XF. Of course, we're also in a higher price segment here. The glove box, the nice button hidden and slides down then right there and also reasonable space no question then at the inside um, of the doors we will soon show you that but first here in the inside of the console for your beverages a little bit adaptive for putting the key there and then finally here USB port aux in 12 volt power supply some more space for purse and maybe phone as well and the inside of the doors for a small racing car, still reasonable, you can um, lay bottles in there, for example. SVR logo on the inside of the instruments. <laughs> you see the steering wheel move down a little bit automatically. And there it is, right side RPMs, like this. Left side speed, and in the middle one, you can adjust something of the menu, see the consumption and stuff. Hard to see now due to the sun, but you can get the radio information there, for example, also Bluetooth info uh, and so on. So um, there's the digital adjustment in the middle. The infotainment unit works via touch. 
in control apps how that one works you have to have a separate app on your mobile phone we have a separate video about that one because they don't use the standard apple carplay connection not really favoring that then you can go check for example where the vents should be coming from there's also this hotkey here and you see that the vents up above there they rise up depending on if you um if you activate them or not let's see now i put them higher again here as well come on yeah there it is <laughs> so that's um especially when you activate or deactivate the middle vents you can also reach it with a hotkey right here always go to the vents or go back again phone connection is possible with bluetooth or with the in control apps as i said earlier and then what about the gps it has been updated throughout the years um let's see reaction times could be better and you'd see that's also not you know as i would imagine it as it works zooming in and out works here so infotainment software wise they could definitely step up the game still then i really love this area here with the big round controls still classic style for temperature and stuff it has a little bit of tech look inside and when you press it by the way it doesn't work here it's here ah, i think i've turned it on the engine for that now you can push it and then seat heating but that won't be uh, needed today of course today is hot but that would be the seat heating push it and push it again to control the temperature really one of my favorite ac units also here again with the eurofighter inspired and inspired buttons and they also have a good clicking sound right here and then here again in detail this very button is really existent in the eurofighter plane um, just that it has another function here of course then for a better exhaust note we'll experience that when we drive and you also heard that already from the outside and here for the rear wing well it looks like it would be a fixed one but no it's even adaptive and when you control it right here you can change it but it also does it automatically when you're at higher speeds if you don't feel humiliated by this massive rear wing then you might be allowed to open the trunk as well or as the english man would say the boot there's an automatic cover rises above that you could also remove it and then for a sports car at least if you pick the coupe there's still reasonable for the space going for the for the airport with two people that would still work actually also um, fixations possibilities here but you know the cover right there usually does all of the jobs nice detail that the cover here at the end of the boot also with a real stamped in aluminum jagger part very nicely done and to entry the fluids you can pull it right there what's the reason behind that it also has something to do with weight distribution and now let's take a stroll around here with the f-type svr and we'll give you different perspectives in riding about this car talk about the difference to the normal f-type of course we'll show you some performance also for your ears as well so what do you do with such a top sports version of a car of course you make it a little stiffer and you do feel that but the suspension is not that stiff that you would say oh a normal f-type is very comfortable and this one here is totally uncomfortable and just sporty it still works i think it's still a good compromise so it does sometimes happen that the top sports version of a car is really well only suitable for a race trick and not really so much suitable anymore for normal driving but here it still works and we can also test this roundabout here for example give it some acceleration get good support to the sides driving about 50 here now still very good handling control of the car good weight balance that's you know one of the main objectives they paid attention to when building the f-type 
We got the all-wheel drive here, therefore it's also not that aggressive to drive the car if it would be raining. If you've got, for example, a normal F-Type without all-wheel drive, then you could have problems there, you know, with the rear braking out. But of course you also have the normal stability control. So when we're still here in normal mode, just accelerate from standstill here. here. Start-stop function, still <laughs> possible for this car, but then... <laughs> the cameraman still alive? Still alive? Still alive. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You can rewind that, that passage, especially like the transition from start-stop function being activated and then the acceleration. Just rewind that. I mean, you guys did rewind the scene um, recently where I hit my head when um, getting in the car in the uh, Cadillac ADS. So you can also rewind that, that scene. It will be surely awesome. Wow, what a sound. I mean, I mean, you know, more towards Come on, let's make all cars silent and, you know, electric engines and stuff. And for normal petrol or diesel engines, we really have to think about, is it really necessary for, for a sound at all? But then I think there are some minor exceptions. You know, if there is a true racing car and one with a very great sound, I think if there's really that one exception, it might be that one. Wow, <laughs> what a sound. And of course, I talked about the acceleration. Even better here, 3.7 seconds, 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 60 miles an hour. 0.4 seconds better. You know, it's going down here. Let's put the car to the ground. <laughs> wow. Also, when I leave the throttle, and this is just the normal mode. I didn't even activate the extra exhaust pipe. So, one more try here. And now I'll activate the exhaust button. Blop, 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 blop. Wow. And you've all maybe also seen when I'm in a, in a sharper corner, as soon as I move the steering wheel a little bit more, I've got a direct reaction, so you really have to pay attention to that. When I deactivate the exhaust valve again, it also gets activated when I'm in the dynamic mode. Yeah, I have to see about shadows here. Now it's the dynamic mode, less stability control, gears turning up higher and shifting down earlier. Here now there's a really great corner. Wow, what a handling. Seem a little bit loose when I'm putting some pressure on the road. Nice. And this is such an emotional car in, in all of its aspect, and you always feel that while driving. It's really nice. And well, due to the all-wheel drive you have there. It's not so uncontrolled as you would have just a rear-wheel drive car with, you know, almost 600 horsepower. So that's still very well controllable. So I think also a wise decision. However, the all-wheel drive distribution is basically one-third, two-third. So that's a standard set, but you always have a rear-wheel bias. And I think that's, that's very important. When you're driving in the city, you can also go back to the normal mode, make the exhaust a little bit less noisy and there's also the snow or rain ice mode then the throttle input is decreased just a little bit it means we're driving here in the city now oh there's another f-type svr <laughs> a convertible what a coincidence so we can here drive a little bit more gently then here in the city. So throttle input when I'm putting the throttle here, slower, 
I think it's also good that we have such a mode available. So, and we'll also turn the car here, let's see, because, you know, in everyday driving, you also have to be ready for that. Turning circle is, of course, not the best one. I have a rear view camera available. It's okay from the resolution here. They can really see very well, because the visibility to the rear is surely not the best one. Great vintage cars around here, close to the Nürburgring today. Always happens when there's old timer Grand Prix at the Nürburgring. And those seats here, they're surprisingly comfortable, also a little bit more comfortable than the usual F type seats. Really too bad um, that they're not available with Alcantara. Um, I think the steering wheel, as far as I know, is available with Alcantara. I would pick that one because you have better grip handle then. It would also fit very well to the stuff we have on there. So the steering um, could be a little bit stiffer for such a true racing car, um, especially when you are now in, a, in some faster situations. Other than that, we got a good handling. The steering is direct, definitely. Wow, I mean, that's really like, you know, putting a matchbox car just by your hand on, on the road. It almost feels like that. So really impressive. And the sound is really one of the, the biggest parts of oh, some off-road vehicles. <laughs> some strange vehicles on the road here today, really special. You can always use those shifting pedals that have better material now. Third gear now. Second gear. <sighs> really heavy and you get such an acceleration boost by the all-wheel drive as well. Also shifting down. Wow. Do you hear that from the exhaust? Really massive. Wow. What do you think, guys? So I mean, sound-wise, also when you're sitting inside the car, I think this this car has the best sound overall. So I'm, I don't think there's there's anything better. I think you could just argue that if something is better there, then you could directly say, okay, maybe then no sound at all. But I think um, hardly to tune that better here. And I think the rate distribution really works well. Um, yeah, maybe the steering wheel. You know, when I'm in the in the cornering situations here, it's sometimes a little bit too heavy the reaction sometimes. So overall, I think they could work on on the natural feeling of the steering wheel. You can, of course, just leave the automatic with all of the stuff, and so you hold the pedal, then you go to the automatic mode again or maybe fine-tune it when going to the dynamic mode. And overall, this ZF automatic is doing a great job. Very smoothly shifting when you're driving slow and also really supporting your racing style driving when you want a little bit faster. I think that's something here where also in combination with the great landscape here in the Eiffel region. It's better just to enjoy, not to talk that much. What do you think, guys? Silence of some cows. Well, respectful to animals, of course. Oh, even desert animals here today. Some llamas, I think. <laughs> Seeing a lot of interesting things here today. And so, if we compare it to the normal F type, yeah, I mean, already a normal Jaguar F type has a great sound, no question, and it has a lot of performance. But here, of course, um, you get a really, really stiff 
feedback from suspension. It still feels agile as you know an F tire with a with a smaller engine maybe with, with less horsepower. So it's not the very very um, biggest difference but you know you feel the nuances that we're going more on the racing style but I think they have done a really good job to keep a normal comfortable character I think that's that's really good I think it's also very important because also customers of the SVR won't primarily use it here for for race track driving they will use it in their everyday um, fun driving like on you know on scenic roads like this and I think they have found a very good setup for that other than that I mean for the sound insulation it's not the main focus that's of course also better with the coupe than with the convertible however I would still prefer the convertible because it gives you the open top driving feeling then that's really important and I mean can't argue about the sound installation here. Um, maybe it's different when we're going in higher autobahn speeds, but it's also not. I mean, <laughs> before you uh, complained about lacking sound insulation, I think it's really more that you hear your own sound with this car, <laughs> just, just from the engine and the exhaust. Enjoy some more with me here. Now the conclusion, Jaguar F-Type S, we are the new top sports version and probably the most powerful serial Jaguar ever. Is it worth the extra price? Well, it's double the price than the normal F-Type. I have to say, if you go for a basic F-Type, manual transmission, V6, microfiber seats, not so much equipment, you already have a lot of fun. So no double the price is not justified but you have to think about how is it you know how does it behave with those top sports variants this is also for customers who say okay I don't really care about the price I just want the maximum that is possible and for that you surely get a good deal still especially in this ultra blue color really my favorite so great I mean what a beauty this car is one of my favorite cars as you know for the styling definitely already interior and also the interior, uh, exterior and the interior styling is also really great as well the performance i think this one here has the best sound the f-type in general always has a good sound here step up the game even more even more aggressive but due to the all-wheel drive you can still very well drive the car without you know feeling that it would be too dangerous and i mean it's not a big sports car but the comfort inside, especially with those new seats, that's really good. So also with the extended Alcantara package on the interior, if they could extend even a little bit more, then it would be also my dream Jaguar. Maybe then the one also with the open top. So a lot we could tell you about this car. We have told you about this car as well. And a lot of insight with the Jaguar Heritage cars. What is missing? What about the future when we're not talking about those V8 engines when this car here at some point may be totally silent like a Tesla Model S for example what is there to come for Jaguar well something has to do also with the engagement in the Formula E in the electric racing series let's find more about that and now we are joined by Christian Danner ex Formula One driver and also a current Formula One commentator in Germany and of course I want to know because he has already driven this car the new Formula E car is it the end of the world for classic racing when we're not hearing the real combustion in the sound anymore well the sound doesn't really make a big difference you know once you're in the cockpit and you use the throttle pedal and the thing goes around the corner fast it doesn't make any difference from a cockpit perspective 
from the outside, it does sound a little different because obviously it's not noisy. However, in, in the future, eventually this thing will be a, a historic Jaguar racing car. The noise is going to be different. Yes, different, but it's still going to be a Jaguar racing car. And that's what is the fascinating bit about it. So you've driven um, a similar car so far yourself. And what is the main difference if you compare it to a classic Formula One racing car in a, in a behavior? Well, it's actually a, a single seater racing car and there's no difference whatsoever to any other car. It, the, the acceleration is good, the deceleration is good, you know, the, the tires, they look, you see, the tires, they look as if they are road car tires. However, they are very sophisticated racing tires. So the grip level is very high, the cornering speeds are very high, and because the circuits, the tracks they're racing on, are quite narrow, downtown kind of street circuits, it's, it's one hell of a lot of fun to drive these things, yeah. Jaguar is now also involved with uh, special racing teams. There are certain parts of the cars that are similar for each racing team, but of course, you know, there's a motivation for Jaguar to be involved in, in this racing. Why, what's the reason for that? Well, it's, it's a future technology and whatever, whatever happens in new technologies, once you go racing with these new technologies, and in this particular case, engines and uh, gearboxes, there's going to be a lot of development and that's exactly what Jaguar needs and that's exactly why Jaguar is in Formula E to prove that they're actually better than the rest of them. Also, no one's, no one's seen that yet, but this is a perfect example to, to, to show what you can do. So we're not there yet if we go the 24 hours of Le Mans in an electric car, but Maybe one day. Depends on the battery technology, <laughs> I would say. But, you know, uh, I mean, this is not a long distance racing car anyway. They're going to look different again. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, guys, and that's it for today. With the history of Jaguar sports and racing cars, we've looked into the past, looked at the current sports pinnacle, had a lot of great sound, that's for sure, and a lot of refinement already. And then, well, we've also talked about the future. What is there with this electric future? And it will be very exciting with the Formula E because they are driving inside the cities as well. They can do that, bringing motorsports back to the people. And also, you know, you don't annoy so many people if there's not this really massive engine sound. We can still hear the engine sound with this car here. And, you know, this will be the closing stage for today's review. But I want to hear your feedback, especially on our format or feature format here today, because you know we've not only done a review, we've integrated it with even something more. So I want to hear your opinion if you like that, the special format, that we could enrich it even more with, for example, the Heritage Racing Cars, with also very impressive death plenty. And of course, feedback also, especially to this car in exterior, interior, and the driving. I'm sure we'll see each other and the next Auto Fuel review, feature, or whatever we'll deliver for you the next time. And I will say, maybe last time for today. Mm -hmm.